Hi everyone, Vegetable Man here. Today's replay is the German Premium Tier 5 Destroyer, the T61. Very, very strong destroyer, especially in ranked, the scan mode. Uh, it can really do a bit of everything, which I think it probably makes it too strong, to be perfectly honest. Uh, you've, got, you've got very good German Hydro, you've got fast reloading torpedoes, good guns, uh, decent concealment as well, and a lot of hit points to throw around. Uh, so, first thing we're doing here is we're heading straight to the B cap. Uh, if I was playing with a team where I knew what they're doing, I would probably go to the A cap. So I would call the B cap is the on cap, and the A cap is the off cap. And the reason that I say B is the on cap is that we spawn closer to it and we're already pointing in that direction. So that's the cap we're naturally going to go to. So if you really want to disrupt the enemy, you send a couple of ships to the off cap, and then you go and cap the on cap. You should really cap the on cap without too many issues, and if you can disrupt the enemy from taking the off cap, or at least maybe even cap it yourself, you give yourself a massive advantage in the game. But even just slowing the capping down or preventing them from pushing through is a big advantage. In this case, so I'm just pushing through B. Uh, you can see the rest of the team is following me. I'm pushing around the corner to spot what's there. Fairly sure there's no destroyers right here because otherwise they'd probably be on the cap by now. I'm not especially fast, only 36 knots, one of the slower tier five destroyers. And you can see there's five battleships on the enemy team currently sighted heading towards A and then we capped it. So I'm reasonably sure that most of them are headed this way as well, but I can see the New Mexico is already heading this way. And I'm thinking he's probably going to be a prime target for torpedoes if he decides to just sail on around that corner. I've had a bit of an interesting start to ranked. This is the first time I've played ranked in Legends. Um, took me a little while to adjust to the meta. Uh, certainly a, a lot of not great players um, in that 10 to 20 bracket for, uh, for the matchmaking. And you've just basically got to hope that if you lose, you save your star to keep your progression, keep your progression up. So the New Mexico's coming around the corner. I can already see though that he's angling away. He's doing the smart thing there. Um, so my torpedoes aren't going to hit. Right now the points are even. They capped at the same time as we capped. Our whole team's here. Th this game could really go any direction right now. Um, it's very hard to say. So what I'm going to do is I want to go and fight a destroyer. Because that's really what the T61 is good at. You've got a lot of hit points to throw. Uh, you've got decent guns and you've got the Hydro, but most important is you've got the good Hydro in the smoke. Find some AP there at the Icarus. Uh, actually the uh, HE, sorry, I was firing. The AP is actually um, very strong in the German uh, destroyers. The downside being that you don't really destroy the modules like the HE does. So the HE you will take out the engine or rudder and things like that, which is really important in destroyer on destroyer fights. Uh, but the AP does a lot more consistent damage, the HE is pretty poor. Got to my Hydron, I was ready to see another destroyer, I knew it was coming, and there's the guy out of the tier 5 tech tree ship. See I've switched to AP uh, after firing initial HE rounds, because especially a ship like the Gator, it's big, it'll eat a lot of normal penetrations from my guns. I've got my Hydron, so I'm reasonably happy that I'm not going to get torped here. So I pop my torps out, generally in his direction. He comes out of the smoke and spots me, and I start shooting him. He's using his Hydra as well now. Possibly the Icarus is here too. Getting some good hits on him. Most importantly, we're spotting him for the team, and the team's doing the work there. And that's really exactly what you want. If you see, no matter what type of ship you're in, in rank, if you see a destroyer and you can shoot it, you should shoot it, because destroyers are the most valuable. Guider goes down, first blood, and that's a great start. I lost just over 2,000 health in that fight, and we took out one of the destroyers, so that, that's perfect. It's exactly what you want to do with the T61, and that's why it's such a ranked winning machine, really. Um, this, this game mode is all about the destroyers, and if you can take them out, you'll win far more games than what you lose. 
lining up now for a torp salvo on this Mutsu. As you can see, my torp reload is just fantastic. I sent a salvo away not long ago, and already we've got another one. And I took from behind my, my teammate there. I probably shouldn't have. I, it would have been nice if he'd slowed down, but he eats all four of them, so that's a wasted salvo. I could I'd be a bit smart ass here and <laughs> a bit of a smart ass, thank you. But that's actually probably my own fault. I run aground here. Uh, but that's okay, I'm not too worried about that. I just want to stay in the general vicinity of these guys. So that I can launch another salvo when ready. And that's only another 35 seconds away already. Mutsu here is going to eat a couple of torps. Fubuki's get himself in a really bad position there. Luckily I killed the Mutsu, but he's far too close to the enemy now. Uh, he's, he's lucky he didn't die there. Maybe get one hit on the buy-in, I think. Yeah, one hit on the buy-in. So, looks like he's flooding as well, which is good news for us. Uh, with so many fast reloading torps, you do tend to get a lot of floods with the T61. You can still see I've only still lost 2,000 health. Two kills now, haven't taken any major risks. Buy-in goes down. I pass on a thank you to the team. I always try and do that in ranked. Ranked is hard enough uh, without people being as smart as like I was before. Um, so I always like to thank people when they take ships out. I mean, killing ships is absolutely critical in ranked. You have to make sure ships die. Do not let low health ships escape because they can come back to haunt you. They will come back to haunt you. So right now we're, we're three ship, uh, two ships up, sorry, in a very strong position and I'm heading towards the A cap because I think I can take the cap. You can see how Fubuki did die, and I actually missed exactly when that happened and why, but he did die in the end. I'm um, lining up a top salvo on this Normandy. Looks like he's keen to push in. Um, the rest of my team's still hanging back quite far. I guess you could say that they're not taking any undue risks, which is probably all I can really ask for. Just waiting for that Normandy to pop around the corner. He got unspotted, but I take a guess. I think he'll be about about there somewhere. And then I back up to the island to protect myself. I'm pretty confident that my torpedoes are gonna do a lot of damage to him, otherwise I would run away. But like I said, I've got a lot of health to trade. There we go, we got two hits initially, and one more hit. He's done a lot of damage, and I'm firing AP, because the HE is so anemic in its damage, it's not worth shooting, so I'm firing AP into his superstructure. He's got his heal on by the looks of it. Um, he's not flooding yet, he's got his heal up. Oh, possibly not actually. And I'm just keep pumping AP into his, uh, into the ship. And that's a third ship down. Took a bit of damage there, but as I said, that was a trade I was absolutely willing to make. I knew it was coming. Um, and another 10 seconds till my torpedoes are reloaded again. That's probably one of the strongest points of the ship is you just you just sent a constant barrage of torpedoes. Heading to the A cap now, just to really make sure we seal this. We're only 200 points up, so we are two ships up, but it's only 200 points. Games can turn very quickly in ranked, so uh, I really want to make sure rather than go chasing any more damage, the first thing I want to do is make sure I take this cap. You see the uh, La Glossonnière is pushing into the cap here. I see, I think he's going to push through that gap, but he gets unspotted, so I wait to launch a salvo, I put on my hydro, so my hydro will detect him at 3.8 kilometers away, and I'm still waiting, expecting him to get spotted. He hasn't been spotted yet, so I'm, I launch a salvo now in case he comes down there, and then I save the other salvo in case he decides not to head down that direction. I've almost got the cap now. There he is. And he has come the other way. He's decided not to push into that. I've got the cap now. Now I'm willing to take some more risk. Put my speed boost on so I can accelerate. I put my smoke on. So he won't spot me unless he's running hydro. And I've seen my final server of torps. There's pretty much no way you can miss that unless you slow down. He's not even looking at me. He doesn't seem to be aware I'm here. And I fire a couple of salvos into him before he eats the torpedoes. That's my high caliber and my fourth kill. And the game ends.
that was down at rank 15 and takes me up to 14. Uh, like I said, it's been a bit of a battle early on. It took me a few games to get used to the T61 as well. Um, it is a big ship and turns quite slowly. So you can see there, 90,000 damage, 4 kills, uh, first blood and high caliber. It's a good game in the T61. It's a good ranked game. Didn't take any unnecessary risks until the end. 3,300 base XP. Took all but one of the kills on the team. And uh, 2,000 base XP more than the second guy on my team. So I think you can call that a carry. Made some good money as well. 300,000 silver um, with no boosters on. So that's really good. Have a quick look at the ship the setup and the captain uh, ship setup. We've got the standard uh, aiming systems mod one for the faster uh, torpedo traverse speed. Um, it's not worth it. The, the turret traverse is fast enough that it's not worth risking it for a reduction in DPM. And then we take propulsion mod in the other slot uh, to help us evade torpedoes, especially if you're in the smoke. Even with hydro, you still want to take that risk. You can potentially take steering gears, but I personally find the propulsion mod is much better. Have a look at our captain now. We've got uh, Eric B. B. Not sure. His base trait is reduced concealment, which is fantastic for a destroyer. Obviously, that's a great base trait to have. We've got Louis Violette. Oh, I butchered that one in the other slot, and that's reduced detectability after firing main guns. Quite a good one as well, at five and a half percent. Looking at the first slot now, we've got Observant Rage. So that's a better reload. Uh, better to torpedo detectability at a little reduced rudder shift and I'm okay with that for the better to torpedo detectability and especially the reload time as well. You could take torpedo speed as well, that's really completely up to you. Next slot we've got the reduced sea detectability. Uh, now the other, the other one you could look at is to listen closely because it gives you more charges of sonar, reduces reload time but gives you reduced duration. I've played with that a couple of times, but I actually found if you're going to play it like that, you may as well play a British destroyer. Um, decrease in the torpedo reload uh, in the next slot down there. Don't need to be to improve the traverse speed. I think it's fine, and we don't need more range. That's, that's sure, it's fine as it is. And then we reduce our smoke screen dispersion and <laughs> deployment time for better engine boost reload. You don't spend your time sitting in smoke shooting the whole time anyway. That's not really the best way to play the T61. And if we were legendary, we'd be running unstoppable in the other slot. Uh, well, possibly Leviathan. Actually, they're both good skills for a German destroyer. Anyway, that's the T61. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time.